Well, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's Saturday morning. See, I'm all loaded up to go to the Clinton County Corn Show. Did that last night. With the plans of leaving an hour ago. And then I woke up in the middle of the night to my stomach doing uh, something that resembled the, uh, the horrible break dancing that that woman did at the Olympics that I've seen videos of. And I uh, decided that I mm, probably ought to stay home today because... Oh, I'm feeling better. Uh, it was a rough night. So, anyway, I'm going to unload the 302 propane. And uh, I'm going to get some things done around today to include. I'm going to do some work on the A4T there. I did fill the uh, fuel tank up with water the other day. It didn't take filling it up with very much water to see that it's got multiple leaks in the bottom of it. Pretty good leaks. So, uh, that's going to go to Spencer to get probably a new bottom welded on it like we did on the other one so anyway uh, and I talked to Wendell Everett and I got I think he has one of the uh, control three-point control pumps uh, at his place that I can replace this one with so I need to work on getting that out and do some other things but a cold front blew through last night and I think we're at about 50 some degrees this morning and uh, supposed to get down maybe in the 30s tonight so we went from upper 90s to uh i got a sweatshirt on today and i'm man i might need a stocking cap not not prepared for this yet so anyway all right i'm gonna work on getting this thing unloaded i'm really disappointed i was looking forward to going to that show and making a video there and i'm sorry but i know my body and it's probably better to stay home today and just make sure that I'm good to go. So I'm going to uh, get busy. All right, got the 302 unloaded, trailer unhooked. I'm going to leave it out because I'm going to get the bush hog buried and it's around the corner in the lean to unburied today, which means I was just standing around thinking about what I'm going to do, where I'm going to put those tires that will go on the back there at some point i need to move the fenders that will go on the back of there at some point i need to move all those things out of the way and the sprayer and the front tires that were on the 950 that go to joe pro to get all the way to the back there to the bush hog and uh i need to do some bush hogging around and then the neighbor that lives over there he's got a field behind his house i told him i would hook him up and uh, knock that down for him because he doesn't really have a way to do it so I'm just debating if I can fit these tires inside or not. And um, yeah, and then I'm gonna get to work on taking the, that real control box off there. And I think I'm gonna, on the motor, I'm gonna clean up that gasket. I still don't have the new gaskets yet. And then on, I think pull, pull out the old throw out bearing, pull the old grease tube off and do a couple things in there to prep that for uh, when I get, get all the parts I need. I was talking to Joe Pro. He's wondering if this is the same as a 950 or 1050 because the thing that's different on here is you have these cables that come down here to control your three point and they go to this shaft. So I'm gonna run next door. I need to put that propane filter back on the 950 and when I do that, I can look at the box that's on the 950 because it should be very similar to this and see what this configuration looks like on there because I can't remember. So you look at that stuff all the time and you don't remember exactly, but yeah, that's it's interesting how this broke because this bottom side shoved out. I can't imagine how that much water got in there to break it or why that would have broke, but she broke. So, all right, we'll go look at the 950, see what we can see. All right, I just walked over here and I'm looking at the back of it, but I'll stick my phone in there so you can see. But yeah, it's the same setup. It's just different. These are clocked differently for the 950 than it is on the A4T, the way that they're sticking. So I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. I still got to get some leaks on this thing fixed. Man, it's leaking from every place. And now I'm seeing it's all wet up through there so i gotta figure all that out but anyway what i came over to do if you didn't watch 
the video, but this filter that goes here, mounts up here, was leaking, uh, just blew last weekend, or yeah, I think it was last weekend, gasket gave way, and anyway, I found these screws were pretty loose on it too, so that didn't help, but anyway, put a new filter, new gasket in, thanks to Dean Zingre, and I just have a temporary bypass hose on here until, but right now I'm going to swap this back over, and uh, then I've got my soapy water there to uh, check to make sure that, you know, we don't have any leaks, and we should be good to go on this. All right, that job's done. Got it up in there, all secured in. Checked it for leaks, no leaks. Smell test, no smell other than dish soap or uh, dishwashing fluid, however you prefer to refer to it, Rena. Anyway, <clears throat> Rena likes it when I call it dishwashing fluid. Um, so yeah, this is taken care of. Now I can go back over and work on pulling off that uh, broken piece off the A4T. All right, for those of you who wondered why I took so much time power washing this area, this is why. Because to work on anything back here, you gotta like, get in here and sit and it's just so much easier when this is relatively clean so i think i got my tools in here that i need to to remove this um let me move around in here a little get down in here a little bit better so in order to take get some pins i, I got to pull out got to take that bolt off the bottom there to slide that piece off here I need to take some lines off here and then I'll take the four bolts off from the bottom uh, and then I should be able to lift this thing out of here so I'm gonna work on getting that done well it didn't take very long to kind of see so I took off that line there that fluid come out I don't know if you can see it oozing down in there but it's a mixture of oil and water so Somehow, oil got or water got down in here, which is not shocking. I mean, you kind of figured that's what happened, but that just confirms that watching what's coming out of this line is it's definitely got water in it. All right, I need to got all of this taken off in order to get to those pins. I think I need to loosen the bottom four bolts and slide the whole housing this way, and then to get that bottom line the same same thing. So. I think I'm gonna work on that now. I got the top line loose. All right, I had to pull this out kind of to get to that bottom line. I don't know if you can see it down in there. I'm about ready to pull it off, but I think what you're gonna see, that's water. That's water draining. So there's the answer to the question. I'm gonna to have to clean out this whole hydraulic system, but that's 100% water, that is not. Sorry. Let me bring it back. Let me get you set up. I'll bring it back. Pick this thing up. Uh, anyway, that's all water down in there. And uh, it definitely was draining out water. That was broke, which is why there's a bolt down there going through. I wondered why it was different than the rest. So that line goes back. So that's not the culprit of how the water got in there. The water had to come from this side, I'm guessing. There's quite a bit in there. I don't know, I'm gonna track that down. But anyway, I got her this far, I gotta balance this so I can go over there and lift this thing down. And my hands are covered in crap now. The other thing is, since I uh, power wash this, another good reason is underneath there where that tray is, actually some holes in there let things drain out which all that water's draining out before that was all plugged up with grease and mud so another good reason to clean before you work but here it is out of the tractor and you can see the crack a little better so here's those levers and i'll have to look but i'm going to imagine there's yeah right there set screws that's how those attach so 
she's toast at least that part is i'm gonna imagine there's rust and crap all through that thing the other thing i did my anal retentiveness caught up with me as i cleaned out the cab a little bit ago i filled up this trash can with all kinds of crap that was in there swept it out have uh that bolts and mismatch pieces parts was in there some funnels just all kinds of crap some hoses got all that stuff out and i think since it's nice and sunny although it's chilly today i'm gonna i'm gonna uh do a little bit of uh spray this down clean it out a little bit better again because down the road as the winter progresses it's going to be a lot easier working on this without dirt on everything so I think I'm going to do that now and it's about lunchtime. I'm going to try to eat something. Hopefully that goes well. Feeling better. Wishing I would have, could have gone to the Clinton County Corn Show, but I am making some progress here without going down there. So, all right, we'll uh, come back after lunch. Real quick before I went in for lunch, I pulled off the steel lines on the other side here. So here and down there and definitely had oil come out, but I had water too. Just want to drain those lines out. I might after lunch trace these lines up, see where they go, put some air in it, blow them out, see if there's any water in there. But uh, yeah, get the water out of the system. Pretty crucial at this point before we get to freezing weather. And some quick tracking that down. This rubber hose here that covers this metal line that's been open to the elements other than my tape I put on when I power washed it and that line back there with nothing on it both lead back there so who knows how long this sat facing straight up being a rain gauge putting water in and filling that whole system in the back guessing these two things are the culprit of all that not guessing that's the culprit of all that so dang it I wish they would have covered that stuff up but Oh well, I'll blow some air through it and uh, get it cleaned out. That's all we can do. All right, I blew, blew air through those two lines. Definitely blew stuff out uh, the back side. I then unhooked this hose from the bottom of the power steering pump, which is supposed to be a metal line going over, but um, that's gone. But anyway, water came out of that which comes up to this. But I've had oil seeping out of that, so I spun the, the pump around some. Definitely forced some more water out, so I probably need to go into side of that pump, make sure that everything's okay in there. And the interior definitely looks better after I washed it out. But over there you can see where uh, blue stuff from here all the way across when I blew it out. Definitely some water and gunk in the line. So I still probably flushed that out some. And I just got done. Talked to Nick Ohio MM earlier. He was asking about this project and how it was going. Talked to Sam Ohio and MM because his birthday was this week. Wanted to say happy birthday to him, but I just cleaned off all the gasket material from uh, both sides of the seal here. I'm still waiting on my seals and everything, but I figured I'd get this cleaned up right now and make that a little bit better. And I think the next thing I'm gonna do is move some stuff around, get the bush hog on the 302 propane while I got it out and go bush hog down my sweet corn, which is basically done. And uh, then go hit my neighbor's field for him real quick. And then I'll come back over and uh, try to finish a couple things on this for the day. But got it, got quite a bit done today for uh, not planning on being here and working on this at all. So can't complain. All right, so the day's coming to a close. So I did get quite a bit done today. I did just clean the inside of the win windows on the, uh, the other A4T. Checked all the fluids check the diesel fuel in it, did everything uh, just to make sure that it's good to go to the fair. Move things around, bush hogged a little with the, the 302 propane and um, 
all that went well and uh, just doing some finish up stuff but uh, we'll get back out here tomorrow do a little bit more and uh, need to figure out I can't remember how to take out the throw out bearing on this if I have to remove the piece it's on I think I do it's been a while so I'm gonna research that tonight and um, and I also want to check the gear fluid and all my transmissions and rear ends and on this so anyway that's it for today we'll get more done tomorrow in the weeks to come on this project but at least I got that out I need to haul that in the barn and uh, set it up so I can take parts off it that I'm gonna need and um, yeah we'll uh, be back tomorrow all right it's Sunday and uh, and try to do a little bit here on the motor i need to put these motor mounts on the front one goes on each side like that i went and got some grade eight bolts to hold those in and uh actually i should probably scrape that mounting surface a little bit and make sure it's nice and smooth and uh i'm gonna put those on all right scrape that got it a little more clean That one's on. And I guess you shim underneath these uh, when you when you mount it up. I haven't had the pleasure of getting there yet, but hopefully we will here in the next few weeks. My pan out of the way. My pan was there for uh, antifreeze kept coming out. Clean this up a little again so I don't have, so have a good mating surface. That sounded a little weird. All right, and I'm gonna drive the other A4T up to the fair today. Fair starts next weekend, but it's a busy week. I'm gonna try to get it up up there today Oliver Phil's taking his articulated IH up there today and we'll get them both there and then that will be one less thing on the list yep, I'm gonna need an extension for that one so let me go get an extension all right huh it wasn't the extension I needed It's that between where the external oil pump is and maybe if I screw this in a little by hand, I can get the socket in there because I don't remember that being a problem when I, you know what, because it was different when I took it off. All right, I'm going to have to go get a box end wrench. So what I was saying when I took this off, it was in the frame of the 1355. So the there was a block that went up against here. It's, it's just a completely different mounting system. So that's why I didn't have these kind of issues when I yeah closed in, won't even go on that. Uh, when I took it off. So there is a difference between these two mounting pieces on each side. This one's a little smaller uh, across the base here. The other one's wider. I went out and looked at the other A4T and I'm glad I did because that's when I noticed there was a difference. Make sure you get them on the right side. Talked to Joe Pro a little bit ago. He's been working on his G950. Now I can get it in there. 
so and on so those are how it mount mounts um, see how that side's a little bit wider so I've got those on now so it bolts at the bell housing in the back and then it has these at the front and other than that that's there's nothing else holding it in the mounting points up here are here and here so and then all the back there so i do have to take out the piece that the throwout bearings pressed on i'm going to drive out a couple uh spring pins there roll pins in order to get that whole piece out so i'm going to probably work on that right now i'm not ready to head up to the fair yet the other a4t i was waiting on phil to call put some diesel in it and uh did a couple other little things but check fluids yesterday i think it's ready to go so let me get the tools that i need in order to before i climb up in there and start working on this all right so the easiest thing about this is i can stand in this front gap here behind the pump and then this is about chest level so this isn't so bad i'm not climbing up on anything so you got two pins here they got to drive out and then I can slip these two rods out on the side. I got a new grease tube coming. So that one's toast. And it looks like it was kinked anyway, so it wouldn't let any grease through there. So get this piece off, then I can press off the throwout bearing. Oh yeah, that's toast. Too exposed to too much water. And then uh, once I get this put back together, this end should be pretty good. So I got them started. This wants to come back, but anyway, that then I flip this down because what they want to do is they want to hit the back, that back plate there. So you got to get it here and then pound kind of up to get them out. It's been a while since I've done this. I don't know if I mentioned, but there's only one spring on this. I'm gonna have to get. I think this should have two springs on it, and. Uh, that spring's pretty rusty, so I'm going to replace both of those because I don't need to get this whole thing together and have that spring break, and then it'll be kind of sad. Not kind of sad, I'll be real sad. All right, I'm going to keep pounding this out, see if I can get these out. All right, after some work, I've got it free. So this is the clutch side. I had to uh, take off the... Let's see if I can show it. Oh, down in there, you can see clevis goes through that and uh, holds on to that and then on this side it's just a grease fitting which is kind of hard to get a hold of to pull it out but anyway now I need to take that spring off and I can pull this whole apparatus out of there and uh, take that off but I gotta get that spring off I forgot about that and I took my tool for taking the spring off back in the barn so I'll go get it and I'm gonna pull this the rest of the way out I'm gonna clean both these sides up on the wire wheel and just make sure everything slides together real well all right I'll go get my spring tool and uh, bring you back when I get all this cleaned up all right I got it off I'll clean all this up this is actually free now I'll clean that up but wanted to show you the inside of the grease tube here so i'm gonna guess this thing hasn't seen grease in a long time and if you look at the inside here that grease is old so anyway i gotta press this off clean this thing up and then i'll uh then i can put the new one on get all this the way that it should be before we put the whole thing back together all right, I got to show you this because a lot of times people say, oh, I'll just put it together and run it. Here's why you don't do that. Hear that? There's nothing smooth or good about that. This bearing is toast. So anybody, you know, when people say, oh, you do, it's good, just run it. 
Mm, this is why I take, I don't usually subscribe to that. I got the new throw out bearing on there. And these uh, were kind of seized up, pulled them out, cleaned them up, greased them, put them back in. Cleaned up, uh, wire wheeled both sides that hold the throw out bearing in. But I don't think I can put it back in yet because I need, I, wanna, I think it's easier to put the, uh, the tube on, grease tube with it out and then put it in. So I'm not gonna, not gonna rush it. Plus I gotta order those springs. So, all right, uh, Oliver Phil I think is ready. I'm gonna start heading towards the fairgrounds in the A4T. All right, heading out the drive. I know Nick Ohio MM wishes he was here to be taking a ride in the A4T. It's a nice day. So back home, a uh, couple of you probably were like, why'd you take the whole yoke out and everything? It's because when I talked to Joe earlier today, Joe Pro, we were talking about it, like, oh, I need to take that yoke out because I'm so used to taking that plate behind it out because we're always working on the smaller tractors that I thought that had to come out. It didn't, but I'm glad that I did because I got it all cleaned up and uh, I think Again, it wasn't that much work to take it out, uh, clean everything up, and make it so that it operates better. Plus, the pin that holds the uh, clutch fork to it, here's the pin. I'm going to get some sunlight on it, but it's ridged pretty good. It almost is, like, bent. Uh, so I'll get a new clevis pin for that, and that will help that uh, operate a little bit better. So I'm going to put this back together and... Uh, put the yoke back in at least and then when I get the throw out bearing when I get the springs I'll put the throw out bearing in well probably just before I put this thing back together because I don't want the throw out bearing sitting out here in the weather like the old one was all right got it back in got the roll pins back in I just put grease on either side kind of see where it's oozing out a little bit so everything's good. I kind of hosed everything down with some penetrant just because everything was dry. And uh, so now I think that's about all I can do up here until I get uh, the grease tube. And so I'm ready to really put this back together, which hopefully will be soon with the motor in it, I'm saying. All right, so I got the yoke back in there. All that's done up here. I came back. The lines I took off yesterday <clears throat> and blew the water out. I just put those back on. I let them drain overnight. Blew them out. They should be good. No more water in those. And yeah, so driveway looks kind of empty with the other A4T gone. I think that's going to be it for uh, for this video. You gotta go out of town tomorrow for a couple days for work and um, I'll get back on this of course fairs next weekend and next week I'll make a video there we're gonna have the antique tractor pulls Monday night 
I'll probably do a little bit with the A4T there. Um, and I don't know what else. I might take another tractor up. I just haven't decided which one I'm going to take yet. So anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave comments if uh, you see something that you don't understand or you think I'm doing wrong. I'm always open for comments. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, the next video on this to uh, keep this project going. But there'll be other videos. Sorry I didn't get down to the Clinton County uh, corn show in Wilmington for that show yesterday. Said I would do it and just my body had other uh, ideas. But we'll, uh, there'll be other shows. So uh, we'll see you at the next video.